Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the basics of animating in Creature 3D. Now, if you haven't actually watched the previous tutorial, this is a continuation of the character rigging and setup tutorial, which we took a fish and then we set it up, set up for rigging and you know mesh bone weighting. If you haven't seen it, please watch it before you proceed with this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to make the fish move, or essentially, we're going to try to waggle its tail. Very exciting stuff. Now, in Creature, in order to animate anything, you have to be you have to be familiar with the bone motor system. A bone motor is basically a compute node which will do some kind of automated motion or manual motion if you want on a bone or a set of bones. You can install bone motors on again a single bone or if it allows a group of bones and it can do any kind of any kind of motion ranging from the very basics which is your manual keyframe animation to something more complex like physics or rotate cycle or IK what have you. There's a lot of options out there. Let's start off with the most basic kind of bone motor, which is manual keyframe animation or forward kinematics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the bones over here. And then you can see it's selected in the scene objects scene browser. Below in the object properties view, there is a button called install motor. I click on it. I have a bunch of motors I can choose. If I click FK motor, which is the most basic one, you can see now I have a widget which allows me to do different kinds of keyframe animations onto this motor. Now obviously I can drag it, right? If I drag it, then it will be there. And then if I, below in the, the panel, in the anim knots curves panel, you can see these are where my keyframes are. I can easily drag through the keyframe. So if I go to say frame 10, and if I drag this up again, that automatically sets up keyframe over there. So now you can see how, right? How it's animating over time. So you can either drag it, you can pl click the player to play the animation. You can step through it by clicking your mouse, or you can use the shortcuts, which is the 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 two arrows at the bottom, the the comma and the the dot arrow, essentially dot button. Right? So you can easily step through your keyframes, and of course the shortcut to actually play the animation is the spacebar and space to stop as well. If I want to jump back to the first frame of the animation, I hold on shift and I press the, again, the left co the comma. And if I want to go to the last frame of the animation, I pre press shift and then the full stop, right? So these are the shortcuts to go through your frames. Very, very simple and very useful. So take note of that. Okay, so whenever I, I do this, I set a keyframe. Now I can delete the keyframes by, again, moving my mouse over to the animation knots curves panel highlighting these guys and pressing delete and that goes away right very simple all the things you expect from a regular animation editor i can obviously move this back okay so this is translation this is the translation widget you're probably wondering how do i rotate very simple so there are essentially shortcuts that switch between the different tra transformation modes so there's w w is translation e gets, gets you rotation r gets you scaling very standard controls so again i can come in here i can rotate Right, like so. I can go to frame 10. Similarly, I can rotate it down, or maybe rotate it this way. And as you can see, now it's animating through the frames, right? Just as I expected, right? Okay, so very simple stuff. That's what we expect. That is the keyframe animation editor. Let's go through it again, All right? Let me rotate this, All right? So I have something like this, okay? And of course, if I highlight these guys, I can drag them to shift them. So these are all standard operations you expect in a regular keyframe knots editor. I can cut, copy, paste, all these operations are all there. So these are the keyframes. What if I wanted to do timing? Well, I move my mouse over to the splines window and you can see now these are my animation splines. Let me make this a bit larger. You can obviously, yep, you can obviously make it taller so you can easily see the splines and you can of, of course lengthen it as well. Totally up to you, a very flexible UI. Now to adjust the timing, all I need to do is again, move my mouse over and drag the different values and that will change the tangents, right? Very simple stuff. And I can obviously drag the end value as well. So what to take note of? The animation knots curves and the splines panel, as you can see at the lower part of the screen, on the left hand side, this shows you all the properties that you're adjusting, right? The properties are basically properties of each 
motor. Each motor has a bunch of properties. In the case of the manual keyframing FK motor or forward kinematics motor, I have properties for my different angles, my various translational offsets, and my scaling as well. And of course, you can tweak these properties and their timing related information in the animation splines panel as well. You can also easily adjust the values of these properties on the right object properties panel. And you can also, of course, jump through each different keyframe very, very easily. So all of that is available to you and you can obviously set values there. All right, so that basically concludes the keyframe, the animation key knots uh, animation part of this tutorial. It's what you expect, not very exciting and probably what you're, you're already familiar with with any other 3D animation tool. So I'm gonna clear that. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make the tail waggle using the power of Creature's procedural motor system, which is, I think is a lot more exciting. So before we do that, let's go back to this bone and we're gonna remove the motor. So move your mouse over to click on remove motor. Let's re remove it. So we cleared everything. And now we're actually gonna use Creature's bone procedural motor system to automatically animate a wagging, wagging tail. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to pick a base bone to sort of automatically have a rotational motion. In order to do that, I'm going to use the rotate cycle motor. So I'm going to pick this bone over here. I click install motor and I move my mouse down over to rotate cycle. So this will give me a rotational motion. Let's see what happens when we play the animation. <laughs> see that it's already rotating but it obviously in the wrong direction so what do we do well let's take a look at what the rotate cycle motor gives us it has a bunch of properties like the start x and x angles the y and the z's right so obviously this was rotating in the wrong axis the wrong direction so i'm going to go in and reset the x directions and I, it should be in a z direction. So what I'm gonna do is I will actually set a start z to be negative 10 and a end z to be 10. And let's see what it gives us. Oh, it's, it's going too quickly, right? So I can, I can then again go in and tweak the properties of the rotate cycle motor. So this is the speed of z. So let me take it down a notch by 10x. So it's 0 0.1. Let's take it to 0 0.1. Ah, there you go. So just by doing so, see, I really have a very simple rotational motion. Now take note, there's no distinction really between a more advanced procedural motor like a cycle motor or a physics motor and your basic FK motor. All these properties are actually keyframable over time. So you can actually keyframe all of these properties and say make the tail waggle faster, slow down, ease in, ease out, etc. Anything you want directly in the knots and splines window. So that gives you lots of power. Essentially, you can you can actually employ traditional keyframe techniques with procedural animation to give you the most amount of flexibility for your animation. Or you can just take the whole thing over and, and manually keyframe it if you want. Creature gives you all the options. So now back to this rotate cycle motor. As you can see, it's already sort of waggling the tail, but that's not exactly what I want yet. So the, the, the tip of the tail is too stiff. And of course, being a real fish, it should be a lot more flexible, right? This is almost rotating a bit too, too rigidly for us. So what do we do? Well, what we want to do is we want to have some kind of follow through or secondary motion for the tip of the tail, the ends of the tail, this, this bone chain. So in order to do that, I want to actually have some kind of physics motion going through three of these bones over here. There's a couple ways to do this. First thing I want to do is I want to select these three bones. I can do it in multiple ways. I can of course go to the scene objects uh, object browser uh, panel, hold on the control key, and then select these three bones. That's one, one way to do this, a standard way of doing this. The second way I can do this is to select the bone. If I, if I press control M, that will give me all the children of the bone, which is also a very useful thing to have, right? So that's a shortcut key again, control M, here because we got the children, all three selected. I can also similarly do it for the child. So I can go to the the tip of the bone chain and then press control N and that walks up the hierarchy. See that? So these are very useful shortcuts. You probably will use a lot when you're actually doing a lot of animation with Creature 3D. So now all three bones have been selected. Next thing I'm gonna do is to install a motor. This time I'm going to pick the bend physics motor. Okay, so this will actually give it physics motion. What do I mean by that? Well, let's play the animation and find out. Oh, wow, look at that. Automatically, you're already getting a very cool follow-through motion just by 
adding the event physics. You get that for free, which I think is very, very cool. And this is the power of procedural animation. With just a few simple mouse clicks, you essentially have something much more complex using procedural motors. Okay, so let's see what we can play with for this bend physics motor. By the way, I'm going to give a more in-depth look into all of these motors later on, but let me give you a taste of what you can do with it. Now, you can obviously adjust the stiffness, so I can make the physics a bit stiffer, the physics of the bend physics um, not maybe not as loose. So if I up it to say 600, this increases the stiffness of the bone, and you can see it no longer waddles that much, right? Similarly, if I take it down to 50, let's see what happens. You can see it's very, very loose. So you have full control of it. And of course, as I said, you can actually keyframe this over time, which is kind of cool. So you can actually keyframe the stiffness and all, all, all the other properties, even damping, how quickly it loses energy, how quickly it damps. There's even control for gravity. So you can even simulate gravity with this sort of physics motor. So it's very, very flexible. Now, what if I wanted to make the rotation of motion a bit more pronounced? Well, very easily, I can go in back to my rotate cycle motor over here and then I can tweak the start and end Z. So let's say if I do negative 15 and 15. So it will go from negative 15 to 15 degrees. And there you go. This is a much more pronounced motion, which I think is very cool. So let's play, play around more with even more motors. I can give a sort of a um, idle type motion or swimming type motion because obviously the fish is never completely still in water. So let me select the root bone and this time around I'm going to install a move bounce motor. So let's see what we get just right off the bat. Oh, <laughs> that's a bit crazy, right? It's translating too much. That's because if you look at the properties, the min x and the min and max x are too large. So again, let me zero them out because that's not what I want. Right? Play the animation, nothing happens because I zeroed everything out. But this time round, let's tweak the other properties. Let's try the min y. So if I make a, give it to a zero, make it at 0 0.1 and a 0 0.1, let's see what we get. <laughs> you can see it wobbles up and down, which is a bit too much. So let's take the displacement down again, displacement down again. And we also gonna have to adjust the speed. Okay, so a bit more reasonable. But this time around, it's bouncing a bit too quickly. So what I need to do is I need to tweak the speed of Y. So if I take it down, let's see what we get. There you go. And maybe even more, even a notch more, 10x. Right, so a bit too, too slow. <laughs> so you can see how, what I'm doing this. All I'm doing is I'm actually just, just tweaking the parameters and it automatically gives me a lot of dynamic motion. Obviously, I can take the displacements down even more, and so on and so forth. And so now this gives more of a sort of a vertical motion for the fish as it's swimming. And of course, I can up the speed now, right, just to give it a bit more dynamics. So anyway, so I hope you get the gist of what you can do with Creature 3D. This is just a sample of what the power of the animation system is. You basically can go in and manually animate with regular FK, keyframe every single frame if you want, and tweak the timings. Or you can go in and install all these procedural motors, which then gives you all the automated motion in a fraction, fraction of the time. Or you can even combine it. You can have certain procedural motors for certain bones, and you can have F FK manually overwrite, manual overwrite for the rest. It's all up to you. Creature is a very powerful tool, and it doesn't dictate how you want to animate your character. You have the full manual animation editor at your disposal, and you can also have a full procedural automated animation editor at your disposal. It's entirely your choice. All right, so this basically concludes the animation tutorial of Creature 3D for the introduction. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.